So in today's video, I wanted to talk about why I didn't enter Landscape Photographer of the Year and why I've never entered any photography competitions at all since I first picked up a camera. Now, with that being said, I did want to talk a bit objectively about photography competitions as well. I do think there can be a lot of positives to putting your images forward into them. And you know what? I'd love to know your opinion. Have you ever entered any competitions? If you have, why? If you haven't, why? That would be really interesting. So for those of you that watched my video last week, I am still in Exmoor and this is the local beach from the cottage. This took me about a minute to get to. What a treat. So I've come down here kind of late afternoon, early evening with the hope to try and get some nice photographs of these groins. I've deliberately come down here at a very specific tide time. We are just past the high tide. So now that water is slowly going to move back towards the end of the groins and it's going to reveal a load of these beautiful wet shiny rocks to use as a little bit of foreground interest. Now this is the sort of topic, the sort of video where I would love to get some feedback from you down in the comments. What is your general opinions on photography competitions? And I've never really thought about it that much, to be honest. I haven't got an issue with them or anything, but I think the biggest problem I've always had when I think about them is just the whole subjective nature of photography. I've found myself in so many instances over the years where I've been shoulder to shoulder with another landscape photographer looking at exactly the same photograph whether it's one of mine one of theirs or somebody else's and we've just had completely contrasting opinions on that photograph one of us loves it one of us thinks it's absolutely naff and this is the side of photography competitions that i think i find the most difficult to understand of course people that are judging images for competitions they know their stuff a hell of a lot more than me, by the way. But I do still think, as an art form, photography, same as any art form, is so, so subjective. How much does it come down to the judge's personal preferences, the judge's personal opinion of what a photograph should look like? I also think as well, regardless of things like the rules of photography, composition, lighting, the technical side of photography, I think such an important part of a photograph is how emotive is it? How does it make you feel when you look at it? And again, this to me is beyond subjective. I could look at a photograph and it resonates with me to the point of tears. I could look at a photograph and it makes me feel absolutely nothing. Again, how can that be judged, the emotion of a photograph? How can that possibly be judged? Now, I think when it comes to judgment of your photographs, of your artwork, if you want to call it that, really, I don't think it always has to be so negative. Judgment, it sounds so negative, but at the end of the day, it's a part of landscape photography that I actually really like. I share my images on this YouTube channel. I love getting feedback from you. For the most part, I really like getting constructive criticism. I like getting exposure. Of course I do. I like getting recognition, all of these things. So from that slant, I can see that as a real positive as to why people would want to enter Landscape Photographer of the Year or any photography competitions for that matter. And at the end of the day, these people that are judging on these photography competitions, to put it simply, they know what they're talking about. They've got a lot of experience behind them and any feedback from these sorts of people could be seen as extremely, extremely valuable. So the tide has only just started going out now. I've been here for about half an hour and I wasn't actually planning on getting any photographs just yet, but then a lovely little sailboat just started making its way across this scene, pretty much on the horizon in the background from right to left. And for about two or three minutes, he was positioned perfectly as a subject on the left-hand side of my frame. 
So I quickly got the ND filter out, the three stop, the polarizing filter, my remote shutter. And I think I managed to grab a shot just in time. And it is such a simple, very minimalist photograph actually of the groin leading out into the open sea. And then just a tiny, tiny little sailboat in the sort of top left hand corner of the photograph. I had to act quickly because the sailboat was actually moving quite fast from right to left and it wasn't going to be too long until he was out of the frame altogether. The main thing I had to focus on was shutter speed. What was the best shutter speed for this moving water down in the foreground as the waves were lapping up at the bottom of my tripod and for me it seemed to be one second so that's exactly what I went for. So it's a real minimalist photograph but a nice one to start off. The video. Upon returning home I decided to convert the image to black and white using Lightroom. It seems to me that the harsher light complements the composition a little bit better. However, I also captured a colour version just a few minutes later with the sailboat still visible in the background. I find myself undecided between the two please let me know your preference by commenting below photo number one or photo number two so i was going to move on a bit further down the beach that way just to explore really see if there was some more of these groins and just see if there was anything else to discover. But I'm gonna do something that I actually never really do as a landscape photographer, and that is just stay in one place. I said this exact term in last week's video. If it's not broken, don't try and fix it. And I feel like this is just another one of those cases. We've got three of these wonderful groins here, all within two seconds walk from each other. And they're all such fantastic subjects. As you can see by me squinting away, the light has even come out now. So I think I'm gonna do what I think is the wise thing and stick around here. This is absolutely spot on. So I've just come a bit further down to try and investigate this particular groin. You can maybe see the camera and the bag dumped off in the distance over there. And I'm sure you'll agree, he's pretty much the same, except for me, he's got a little bit of a gap in the middle which is fine, he's got a little bit more character, we can work with that, but what I do like here is if you look down on the floor, the boulders, the rocks here are much bigger than what they were over there, and you can maybe see as the waves come over them there, they look absolutely fantastic. So not a massive difference, but we are gonna get a little bit of variety down here in the foreground, which is a win. Now I reckon this tide is Ooh, about 20 minutes away from being in the perfect position. Like I said before, we wanted to get to a point where the tide was just at the start of the groin and all of these rocks down here were nice and wet for foreground. And it's looking like we're not far off. Now, I wanted to talk about something else with regards to photography competitions. Now, I don't want this to sound negative because I do think the social side of landscape photography, let's say, is brilliant. I love going out with other photographers and you know, networking, I love social media, sharing my images, seeing other people's images, but I do think there's a big side to landscape photography that is very personal and it's a very personal journey. Now, what I mean by that is, you've sort of got to go out and take photographs on your own to discover your own style to discover how you want to express yourself as a photographer. And I think sometimes, as nice as it is to get feedback from things like photography competitions, you don't want to fall into that trap, really, of feeling like you need external validation from your photographs. You hear the term a lot from me and from other photographers, shoot for yourself. You've got to go out and shoot for yourself. What that means is take photographs of what you like to photograph you know regardless of what other people think whether it's your family your friends or whether it's experienced judges at photography competitions now although i do believe in that you've got to go out and take photographs for yourself photograph things that you want to photograph and not take images that you think are going to win photography competitions i do think there's another side to this as well and that is probably inspiration if you're 
regularly entering photography competitions. I mean, look, you've got to pay for them, for most of them, for a lot of the main ones. So you're not going to be wanting to take naff photographs. That surely is going to make you a better photographer. It's going to improve your skills and it's going to expand your creativity. You're likely going to grow as a photographer. Now, I think this calls for a metaphor. Imagine you're into running, but you want to get better at it. You want to get fitter. You want to get faster. So you enter a marathon, perhaps a year in advance. You're now going to be so much more likely to want to get out and train and get out and improve. That's how I see photography competitions to a certain extent. If you're planning on entering a competition, say in 12 months time, you're going to spend that year trying to get a good photograph, trying to get something that you think might have a good chance of winning an award. It's as simple as that. So again, I do think there's a bit of a positive in that aspect as well. I've actually come over to the other groin, the only one that I haven't inspected, but I'm so glad that I did because now that I'm up close and personal with it, I could see loads of these bigger rocks are actually wedged in between a lot of the posts. I can only assume by the sea, by the movement of the waves. Perhaps people have placed them there, I don't know, but it looks really cool. I'm grabbing a quick square crop here, black and white, just because we've got some really nice long shadows. The light's still proper harsh, so it's really contrasty, but yeah, that's why I'm going for a black and white. And I'm going to go and inspect it further because I'd like to get something a bit more long exposure if I can. so so I don't really feel that buzzing about it <laughs> maybe it's the light you know we're not out for sunset or anything this evening look it's still quite high in the sky I just missed a brilliant opportunity that was the that was the rogue wave that I was looking for but I'll show you my composition as another rogue wave comes in fantastic so that's me missed two there but you can see simple enough groin Leading out into nothing, we've got the horizon again. I quite like this like, idea of nothing off in the background. So I'm not too bothered. I'm going down here because I'm going to miss another wave. I can feel it brewing. But you know what I'm doing here. Around about one second exposure with the remote shutter. There's the wave, there's the wave. Three stop ND on the front with the polarizer. Polarizer's helping quite a lot, actually. And as you've just, as you've just witnessed, I'm just trying to wait for the right wave. I'm pretty wide, 24 mil, yeah. And it's all right, it's all right. So same as with the earlier composition, I decided to explore both a black and white and a color version of this image. But once again, I find myself undecided on which one I prefer. Each version possesses its own unique qualities. And perhaps that's the beauty of it. We don't have to choose, we can appreciate both. Nevertheless, for the sake of discussion, if you were to pick one, which version would you go for? Please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> what did you think? I don't know. I think it's maybe the sort of image that would have inspired me a lot three or four years ago, maybe when I first started out, you know, the sort of long exposures like this, but it, it just feels a little bit boring as not to be so negative. <laughs> now, I wanted to talk about one more thing about photography competitions. I actually wanted to end on a positive note. And this is something that is my own opinion, but it's perhaps not enough for me to want to enter one. And that is the, I think the photographs that win, the photographs that get commended, even the photographs that don't even get a look in are absolutely fantastic. There are some unbelievable photographs. I actually got the Landscape Photographer of the Year book from last year. I've got it at home and it's so good. The standard of 
photographs, the standard of landscape photography is just unbelievable. It's so good and so inspiring. That's what I'm trying to get at. So it does bring out some true gems, some truly incredible landscape photographs. So that's always good. <laughs> it makes me feel like my photographs are rubbish when I flick through that book. They are unreal. Anyway, like I said earlier on in, in the vlog, I'd love to know your opinion on it. Maybe it's a little bit contentious. You know, it's all just my own opinion and stuff. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of positives as well. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.